All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here today. Um, we're gonna get this meeting started. Um, I'm gonna start and play our uh, prerequisite recording now, and then uh, we'll uh, announce the meeting and get it going. So discussing the items that are listed on the meetings, the Congress West Area Neighborhood Development Council meeting. My name is Gina Fields, and I am the chair of our Neighborhood Council's board. Our board is a representative body that is elected by area stakeholders. There are many ways of becoming involved in our neighborhood council. We would love for you to become a member of one of our active committees. If you would like more information or to become more involved with our neighborhood council, please meet with me after today's meeting or speak with one of our committee chairs. During our meeting, we will be discussing the items that are listed on the meeting's agenda. There are copies of the agenda for your use at our welcome table. The agenda contains a list of the items that we will be discussing during our meeting. We will proceed with each agenda item in numerical order. Now is the time for board members to survey the agenda to determine whether any board member present has a conflict of interest under the State Political Reform Act, Government Code Section 1090, or the Common Law Rules of Bias. These rules provide that a board member should not participate in matters in which he or she has a financial interest, or when he or she has a personal interest, which may conflict with their official duties. Should any board member have a conflict of interest at the time the agenda item is announced for discussion, the board member should identify the general nature of the conflict, indicate that he or she is recusing him or herself from participating in the matter, and leave the room during the duration of the discussion of the item. Before we make a decision on any item, the public is provided with the opportunity to provide its comments on the item that we are considering. If you have a general comment on an item that is not listed on the agenda, then you may provide us with your comment during the public comments portion of the meeting. Please understand that there are certain laws that apply to neighborhood councils that limit our discussion to the items that are listed on the agenda. These laws limit the actions that we may take during our meeting. Thus, we may be legally prohibited from acting on a concern that you expressed. However, Please note that your concern may become the topic of discussion at a future meeting before our neighborhood council, after we have had the chance to list the item on the agenda. In order for you to speak and be heard on any agenda item, you will be called on by me when is your turn to speak. In order for me to know you want to speak, please raise your hand. When a person is speaking, they are entitled to courtesy and respect. There should not be any other discussion occurring in the room. If you want to chat with your neighbor, then please take the discussion outside while our meeting is in session. We will treat one another with respect during the meeting. That means we act with civility and decorum. We do not boo or hiss when disagreeing with someone's point of view. Any competing viewpoints may be articulated without the need for inappropriate or uncivil action. Last, please turn off, put away, or turn all cell phones on silent. Due to the nature of our discussion and actions, all board members should put away all cell phones during this meeting, especially when voting on motion items. Thank you. All right, thank you everybody. Again, on behalf of myself, I'm Gina Fields, Chairperson of Empowerment Congress West Area Neighborhood Development Council, also known as EQUA. Uh, thank you so much for being here today and uh, we welcome you. Um, I have this, we have this up displayed for COVID-19 testing. COVID-19, is blowing up around our city. It is going crazy. People are getting, more and more people are getting infected every day. I urge you to get tested. Please wash your hands. Please wear masks. Please socially distance. Uh, and thank you. All right, Kathy, so thank you for that. And do you mind uh, popping up the agenda for all of us as well? All right, so thank you again. And um, today we're gonna pop up our agenda here. Great, so welcome everybody. I'm calling to order this meeting for the uh, Equa Neighborhood Council Special Board Meeting, Tuesday, November 17th, uh, 2020. And thanks again for being here. Um, so today we will do our welcome and we'll start with our roll call. Kathy, can you handle our roll call for me, please? Sure, um, good evening, Gina Phil. Uh -oh. What's wrong? There you go, okay, I couldn't hear you. Now I can hear okay. you. Okay, Gina Fields. Present. Denise Stanzel. I saw you, Denise. She's on here. I see her. Okay, Mary. 
Mary Joan Starks. Denise is here. <laughs> Thanks, Denise. Um, I'll come back. Isaiah Madison. A Couture. Everybody's muted, so you may so not board be members able to... can board members can unmute themselves. Great. So board members, please unmute yourselves. A Couture. Jackie Ryan. Diane Robertson. Here. KJ. Edmund. Treasurer here. Kathy, good evening. Kathy Guyton, Secretary. Shelby Fowler. Media, uh, Shelby Fowler, Media Coordinator here. Jason Lombard. Good evening, Jason Lombard, Board Member at Large. Johnny Rains. Good evening, Johnny Rains, Board Member at Large. Misty Wilkes. Good evening, Misty Wilkes, Board Member at Large. Avis Gibson. Good evening, Avis Gibson, Board Member at Large. Uh, did we get Isaiah Madison? Mary Joan Starks. A Couture. We have quorum. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you again, everybody, and uh, bearing with us through our roll call. And uh, next up, we're going to move into uh, public comments for non agendized items. So, uh, just a little bit of a breakdown of how we're going to run the meeting today. First, we're going to do public comments. We have um, um, about 10 minutes to do public comments. Every person will get one minute uh, to speak during public comments. We'll put up a timer. And these are for anything that is not on the agenda. On the agenda, which is number three, we have a discussion and a Q&A with Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Economic Development Partners, the group that is partnering with LiveWork, the developer who are uh, contracted to purchase the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza Mall. So they will do a presentation. After their presentation, we will open it up for public comments, 15 minutes of public comments related specifically to that agenda item. Everyone who wants to, first come, first serve, will raise their hand and get one minute to speak on the um, item on the agenda. After that, we will move into the Q&A. The Q&A will be on the chat only. So uh, we will open the chat um, at that time and at that time, you will be able to type in any of your questions. We will go through the questions in order and we will ask every single question in order on the Q&A, um, during the Q&A, every single question in the chat until 6.30. Our meeting is from 5.30 to 6.30. So we will try to get through as many questions as possible. So again, I urge you to try and be concise so that we can get as many, give everyone the opportunity to uh, have their question asked. So if you can present a concise question, we would greatly appreciate it. And we'll ask our presenters to give as much information as possible, but hopefully concisely so we can get through as many as possible. And we hope that this really gives our stakeholders uh, the biggest option, the best option possible to be able to have their voice heard. So uh, thank you so much. And with that said, we will open the meeting for uh, 10 minutes of public comments and everybody um, well, on here, we have a two minute limit. So you get two minutes, apologies, you'll get two minutes uh, to speak. So if you have a public comment not related to the agenda item on the agenda, please raise your hand now. And uh, Kathy, do you mind taking that down for me just so I can look through and see if there are any hands? All right, so again, this is a two minute comment for items not on the agenda. We will give everybody a chance to also make comments later on for items that are on the agenda. Um, and the first person we see is Ken Herbs. Ken Herbs, I'm gonna unmute you. And uh, it's your two minutes. And um, if you can, um, Edmund, if you don't mind, would you be able to put up a timer for me, please? A two minute timer. We sorry, I changed up on you for the one minute uh, because we have to go with what's on the agenda. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. All right, uh, Ken, the floor is yours. Uh, good evening. I missed my opportunity last time to put in my two cents, but I just kind of want to lead off with a, peti a petition for civility, patience, open-mindedness, and the likes. Uh, there either is, you know, it's either it's not a big deal or it is, but there seems to be a lot at stake here, a lot of what's going on in the community. And uh, I found myself right smack in the middle of it a few months ago when people were putting in petitions for the bid, excuse me, 
putting in bids for the, for the mall. I've gotten very acquainted with quite a few people in the community over the last several months. And uh, <laughs> it seemed like there's been an accelerated uh, occurrence of backbiting, hostility, slander, and the likes. And I'm feeling like at this point, if I had nothing else to offer, it would be a petition, a humble request for some civility. All of us are important. Everybody should have a voice as best I can tell. And I believe and we can do better than I've witnessed over the last few months, including myself. We all make mistakes. I'm hoping that we can move forward with some intelligence and get some real solid business done here that benefits South LA, period. Flatlands and the hills, period. All people, I'm done. Thank you so much, Ken. I appreciate that. And um, I'm sorry, y'all. I've neglected to read the public comments uh, item here. But Ken, thank you. Appreciate your comments. Uh, public comments are for matters not listed on the agenda. You have two minutes to speak. We are not allowed to comment or discuss public comments, but please know that you've been heard. Uh, we'll get to as many comments as we can during the 10 minute period. And uh, please raise your hand if you'd like to speak. So I apologize for not uh, stating that first. All right, uh, next up, uh, Terry. Scott, I'm going to unmute you. And Terry Scott, you have two minutes. Hi, I just lost my screen. Um, all I wanted to say is this Thursday, the Murphy Village Inc. is um, doing a online charrette about um, vendors and vending uh, and festival producing in the Murphy Village around the future of vending events, um, please come. Great, thanks so much, Terry, appreciate it. All right, uh, next up, um, Bobby Jones, I'm going to unmute you and you have two minutes for things that are not on the agenda. All right, Bobby, I clicked ask to unmute, so you have to unmute yourself after I click on it, okay? All right, I can't get Bobby unmuted. I'll try you again after. Um, so uh, next up, uh, Zarina H. Williams. Do I have that, Zarina Williams? I'm gonna unmute you now and you have two minutes to speak. Hi, I might need just less than two minutes. But I just wanna talk through just um, some concerns about the process. This meeting obviously is very short notice. The matters in the agenda, I'm not gonna specifically, but obviously are important to the community. So I think it's important to do just a better job in being able to provide transparency in meetings of this nature or in future meetings. I have also been under the impression or informed that the board has not released meeting minutes or special videos regarding previous minutes on certain topics, including those that may be relevant to this. So I think, you know, in general, in terms of process, you guys owe it to this community in terms of matters that are important, that are sort of anchoring in their community to provide the transparency and the tithing that they need to be able to contribute comment effectively. Um, timing is very crucial. Short notice does not help those that have childcare that are parents who are working. Um, and so to ensure you have all the voices that are required to impact and speak um, correctly about the impact of motions in their community, um, just do a better job in making sure you free up the right time so that they're able to do so. Thank you. I uh, will happily resend my time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and let's go on to the next. Um, I see a phone number here. The last three digits are 917. So 917 are the last digits. I'm trying to unmute you. Uh, you have to click accept and then you should, or is it star nine? Help me out here, Edmund. Is it star nine for the person to unmute themselves? I don't remember. Hello, it's star six. Star six, apologies. Star six to unmute yourself, hi. please. All right. Yes, uh, hi, I, 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 I'm on mute. My name's Camilo. Uh, thank you. Uh, just very quickly, I, I uh, would like the board to take into consideration moving forward just the idea of um, public ownership uh, and public determination of their own futures, just in the terms of community land trust and uh, cooperative, cooperatively owned businesses and try to center 
those types of things that support the community's own, you know, success and flourishing going forward. And that, that's really all I all I have for a general public comment. It's just, just to keep in mind how the community can build its own long lasting success through through social measures. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. And uh, next, uh, Misty Wilkes, uh, you have your two minutes. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, one, just to um, invite the community to join us and help us. We are all volunteers. I certainly have never um, gotten a dime for any of the time that um, I put into neighborhood council. And this week alone, between work and committees and volunteer work, I've had, I think, um, eight Zoom meetings already um in school also i have one after this one and some of the criticisms that we are getting are simply because we don't have time for you know our our jobs our work our families our other commitments if we're not doing things fast enough please i challenge the community to volunteer and help us i mean we are however many of us that we are but in and I, I had my hand raised before the other young lady um that was speaking um, I certainly don't mind holding us accountable, but please jump in and help us. Um, so that's one part. Also, I'm not sure that the community at large understands exactly who we are. You can go to empowerla.com. Um, there's very specific rules that we have to follow. Um, and I know one of the criticisms that we got recently was that we didn't get a we didn't get a chance. Someone told me that 227 people wanted to make public comments. And somebody said 300 people want to make comments, public comments. If you guys are willing to have meetings for 10 hours and listen to every single person, please volunteer to be on the board and, and, and host those meetings and listen to those comments. Um, we would love to have you. Um, and then sometimes we try to give people a voice. I heard there was opposition at the bunk meeting and now we've been advised to close our chat. So now we can't even hear and listen to the things that we wanted because people were complaining about us. So now we've had to close down the voice that we did have to be able to communicate with you all. Thank you, Misty. And I think my time is up. Thank you. All right, and uh, we have time for two more. I'm gonna go to uh, David Odesanya. I and apologize if I uh, mispronounced your name. Uh, and I've clicked, uh, there you go. The two minutes is yours, sir. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great, my name is David Odesanya. I'm a stakeholder in the Crenshaw area and a member of downtown Crenshaw Rising. I'd like to frame the discussion by saying, what, what's better, half a pie, a quarter of a pie, or a whole pie. When it comes to community, what's most important is that we have the whole pie. What, what's most important is that we have <clears throat> community ownership. What's most important is that we control, we own what is important to us. I think that's a very important discussion at this board need to take up in future meetings and at this board need to take now, is that it's no longer about the crumbs or about the quarter pie or even half the pie. It's about the whole pie. It's our entire community and we make up the community and we have the right to determine what goes on in our community, what is done in our community and what happens to our community. Cause we're the ones who benefit the most and we're the ones who be most effective. When we own it, we know what's best for us. No one else can come in and say, do this or do that. When we know what we want, we can go out and get it. So that's why it's very important that we go after the whole pie, not just half the pie or a little bit of the pie, but the entirety of the pie that we own it that we control it and that we say, hey, this is us. Ways to do this is through community land trusts, through cooperative ownership, through cooperative businesses that uplift everyone in the community, not just a few, not just five or four or three, but everyone in the community. I think it's important that everyone in the community has access and knowledge regarding community land trusts and community ownership and cooperative ownership, but also realize that the way the system works now is that all we're getting is crumbs or a quarter of the pie when we could have the whole pie. We, we could have it all, but we, we have to just take it and demand it and fight for it. <clears throat> and if we do fight for it, <clears throat> it will, excuse me, sorry. And if we do fight for it, we will win. And because when every time we fight, we win. Like they always say, freedom is a constant struggle. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And last one, we'll go to uh, Darlene Gay. The floor is yours. 
Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Darlene Gay. I am a, a co-chair of Greenwood Community um, here, and it's a virtual uh, community. We um, look at uh, the spirit of Greenwood uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We carry that spirit uh, of Greenwood and building our own economics uh, virtually. And I encourage you to do the same. Um, look at empowering not only ourselves, but our generation and leaving a legacy for our generation to have power, to have land power, to have land power, which we had once before. This is nothing new for us. We had it before. We can get it again. Tulsa, Oklahoma was burned for three days three days of just burning and destroying what we had, what we built. I ask all of you to get in the grit and learn to stir up and ask hard questions. Ask hard questions and have people to be accountable because this land is ours. They burned it, it is ours. It's time to take it back. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, so we're gonna move on to uh, our next uh, segment. Uh, and that is, uh, this is new business. This is number three on our agenda. Discussion with uh, Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Economic Development Partnership, the group that is partnering with Live Work, the developer contracted to purchase the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza Mall. Um, and now I'll pass it on to, uh, let's see, Johnny Rains on here. And uh, Johnny Rains. Uh, the floor is yours for the introduction. Okay. Good evening again, everyone. And as uh, Gina said, now we're going to move on to the, I guess, the reason that everybody's here this evening, more or less, to hear the presentation from the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Economic Development Partnership. I would ask one thing that we understand that they are here to make a presentation. Let's be respectful, whether we agree or disagree. You know, let's treat each other like human beings. I noticed some things in the chat at our last meeting that didn't seem like they were, the comments were going between human beings. So we wanna to try to eliminate that. We're here to try to get as much information as we can about this group or organization and find out what their plans are. It won't be served by anyone using it as a platform for anything other than that. So with ha that having said, I see Roland. I don't know if the rest of the group is here, but I'm gonna introduce uh, Roland Wiley now. You have the floor, Roland. All okay. right, hang on. There you go, Roland, unmute yourself. Gotcha. Can, you, can you hear me? If, if people nod, if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. All right, all right. Well, good evening, neighbors, friends, colleagues. Uh, we're very excited to be here. This is a special evening. Uh, this is a long time coming, folk. Long time coming. This is an opportunity. This is a year of opportunity. This is 2020, folks. This year changed our lives, everybody's lives. And now we have a very special opportunity, an unprecedented opportunity. And we are representing some Black men and women of our community, by our community, that want to be a portal for ownership, for community ownership, of the Baldwin Hills Mall. In the next 20, 30 minutes, we're gonna present ourselves, who we are, who are these five people? These five people represent a much larger community. And I am in awe, and I'm not just talking, I'm not talking sales, literally in awe of the four partners that I am working with. What they have achieved in life, their community mindedness, their sincere interest in helping black people, their sincere interest in excellence. That's what this is about. This is about unity. This is about leveraging an opportunity that ain't coming back again, y'all. This is it. And we need to get together. We need to be together despite our differences, just like any other community, to come together and move forward and stop stopping. So in this time, and is there 
I'm looking for the presentation. Can it can it come? Can somebody bring up the presentation? Because um, I can talk all day long, but I want to talk to some some specifics about who we are, how we got here, What's this what we're trying to do, and how we need your support and your participation. Um, so if, um, if I don't exactly know how to turn this, this uh, presentation on. Are you, uh, are you uh, I've given you the ability to share screen. So if you sh have it on your PC and you click share screen, that should bring it up for all of us. Okay. Uh, um, Sheree needs to be unmuted because she's going to share the screen. Yes. But I will search through here for her. I've got you, Sheree. Okay, unmuting you. And then I am giving you the ability to uh, share screen. Hello, no, Sheree. Franklin, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. So as, as we go along, I'll just keep talking about, my name is Roland Wiley. Um, I, I'm a resident, a 38 year resident of, of View Park. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm an architect. I'm a husband and a father of two young black men, 22 and 24, and I'm a man of God. And our team, we are jet black. And I'm saying it unapologetically. We are jet black. We are about empowering black people. We are about educating black people. We are about creating a revolution, a revelation of our, of our experience, of our capabilities, of our genius. Between the five of us, we have 195 years of experience. I'm not trying to date myself, but I started my company in 1984. And we have employed many of the people might even be on this, this, this line, this call we've employed. Uh, we, we take, my company, Raw International, we take very seriously opening doors of, of opportunities for, for Black folk. And we see this as an unprecedented, unprecedented collaborative between top Los Angeles construction, engineering, design, and planning professionals. Again, to be that portal, to be that conduit for opportunity. Our, our objective is to ensure that those overarching guiding principles that my firm, by the way, established in the original Baldwin Hills master plan will be preserved and leveraged. Because again, this is 2020. This is a reset moment. This is post COVID. We have to plan post COVID. Anything before COVID, any plans before COVID is exactly that, BC. We're in a new age. We have to reimagine, we have to re-envision, and we have to be innovative in our thinking. Uh, I, I call myself the chief architect. I call all of us, the five of us, the five chiefs, because we're in, We've been in leadership positions for, for so long. We've been in a position to open doors of opportunities, to demand excellence, to be a role model. And so that's what we plan on doing collectively. And that's why this is unprecedented. We're doing this collectively. Can y'all imagine the power we can have if we can work collectively and then step and stop stabbing each other in the back? Can you imagine that? The opportunities are endless. Myself, as I said, I started my company, Raw International, in 1984. There's, there's, we employ 12 people right now. Um, some of my experience, I'm chief, currently chief architect for the West Side Extension Subway Project. That's a $7 billion project. Uh, I was lead station planner for the Crenshaw LAX transit line. Uh, we were the master plan architect for the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw model, which we'll talk about later. I'm a lead planner for the Lemur Park master plan lead planner for Destination Crenshaw, and, and currently I'm principal architect for the Beverly Hills uh, City Hall Tower renovation. So I'm busy as I'm sure all of us are, but I will make time to make sure opportunities are created for other black architects, that classes are created to teach young black people about architecture. That is, that is my personal goal, to work with the National Organization of Minority Architects 
and open doors of opportunities on this project, which will ultimately be over a billion dollars. Uh, we have, as I said, four chiefs. We have Cherie Franklin, our chief development advisor. Cherie. Hello, Roland and Gina, could you kindly unmute uh, Dolores Brown, Earl Gales, and Brenda Curry? They will be speaking next. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity uh, to share with you. And we are uh, here and committed to creating an opportunity uh, for community ownership and participation uh, in the development, the business opportunities, and we also focus on developing the surrounding community. Uh, we spent a lot of time thinking through this process of how do you actually do this? Uh, personally, I, I've lived and grown up in South Los Angeles my entire life. I grew up in University Gardens Project in Jefferson. I'm a proud toiler and I'm, I live here a stone's throw from the mall. I am uh, focus on community development. I specialize in affordable housing development. I've raised over 150 plus million dollars to invest in our community. Uh, I helped lead the efforts uh, to, with concerned citizens to start the revitalization of Central Avenue. Uh, we built affordable housing there. And I can remember the day when I walked to Slauson and Central and I said, to, there is where we need to put a shopping center. It was a big mound of <laughs> twisted metal at the time and everybody told me there'll never be a shopping center there. But if you go to Slauson and Central, you will see the Juanita Tate Marketplace and it generates over $50 million a month in income uh, and revenue because it's in our community. Uh, I'm committed to social enterprise. I'm committed to social justice. Uh, I've worked in partnership with um, my family and other uh, uh, committed people like Cheryl Branch and Chauncey Bullock to launch the largest cannabis incubator in the United States. We, we did that so we can make sure that our, our brothers, our African-American brothers who have been in war on, on drugs have an opportunity to own the businesses. So you can go to 62nd and at, at, between Avalon and Central, 62nd Street, and you will see that we are investing in our community. We've raised money from our community to build that. And we're implementing a project across the state of California to empower African-American leadership in cannabis and hemp. We're also developers. We have land that we're developing on Crenshaw Boulevard. Uh, we are looking at developments um, throughout the city that are community-based. Uh, they are, are developed by the team members you see here. And we are gonna continue that. I've large projects across the state, the state as well as in the city, Sixth Street Bridge, um, uh, again, the Central Avenue Historic District, we formed that, the Lamert Park Village and Crenshaw Corridor, Business Improvement District, we formed that, the Jefferson Corridor, BID, we formed that. Uh, we are raising capital for, for government agencies as well as nonprofits here in our community, and that's what our commitment is to lead and making sure that we have uh, our families and our, and our community at the table and that we go and get all the money possible to make this the best project that we all wanna stay here and never ever early. So we don't have to talk about quote unquote gentrification. We're not going anywhere. We're gonna stay here and we're gonna build that project for us, by us and for us. And everybody can reach me. I'm available at all times. You can have my phone number 213. 447-9264 and I'll email it to anybody. I'm available, not hiding, and we're here and we're not going anywhere. Amen. Thank you so much, Sherry. And then um, Dolores uh, Brown, I can't find you in the list. So could you unmute You might yourself? see her under R-H-A-S. Thank you. Uh, and Dolores, you now have the capability to unmute yourself if you unmute yourself for me. Do we have you, Dolores? She's here. She's Hi, yes. Dolores. Yes, great. Thank you so hey, much. Hey, Dolores. Hi. Well, thank you so much for having the opportunity to um, really come to the table and to begin to have a conversation about probably our life's work. Um, 
I'm, my name is Dolores Brown. I have lived in the Crenshaw um, community and I'm gonna tell my age, 67 years. Um, and with that said, um, I have begun the journey um, focusing on creating community and economic development. I um, moved into that aspect of community and economic development because my first life was a banker. And um, as being a banker, and I, I want to give kudos and shout out to most fam people may not remember Founders Bank, fa um, Family Savings and Loans, which were my first branches that I managed years ago. And so um, with that said, venturing into the, the banking environment, one of the, the major areas that was a, a concern was the lack of number one, redlining for our community. And number two, not having the ability to have to see um, communities built. Um, and so we got involved and I got involved in the community development aspect through the first graduate of USC, under the Minority um, Development Program in 1993 um, to focus on um, creating developers that looked like us that had a focus on community at large. And so um, with that said, um, interfacing within the community, one of the, the key factors was figuring out how do you bridge resiliency for communities? And bridging resiliency was being able to, how do you bring capital to the community? And so with that, I spent um, the last 21 years sitting on a board for Clearinghouse CDFI, ensuring that any dollars that had the ability to um, come into our community came. Um, with that said, I am the chairman of the um, advisory board um, focused on new markets tax credits. Um, I have, through my tenure, deployed $584 million for projects for underserved communities. Um, I'm very proud to talk about that. I am now um, on the board for the um, National Minority Wealth Fund that was just established in um, July of this year, focusing on making sure that our um, African-American businesses have the ability to have um, the um, resources necessary for them to have the ability to scale. And so um, with that said, the whole purpose and the premise of why we deliver the services is to figure out what does resiliency look like. Um, so from for SPA 6, for being able to deliver services from a human service perspective, we have employed, we have created family preservation units that focus on making sure that we keep our families together when there was a, a huge um, disproportionate number of children that were re being removed from homes. So we engaged in that process. Um, I am currently focused on right now, making sure that we have a stake at Opportunity Zones and making sure that we have a voice to be able to bring the investment dollars to the table to make sure that our community participates. I currently have a, a project that we're focusing on right now. It's a 250 unit project that we're developing in the middle of downtown Long Beach in a very underserved area where we are developing 250 units of affordable housing in a mixed use environment. Um, so I, I just want to be able to say that the, the focus of, of that you'll find from each one of the partners at this table is that we collectively came together to bring our best practices, to roll, out, roll up our sleeves and to pull out our Rolodexes and to figure out how at the end of the day that this community has resiliency. And so that is the principle and the purpose and the driver that keeps us connected to wanting to do this work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Earl. Next. Earl Gales. Uh, so Earl, feel free to unmute yourself for me. Okay, idea. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Well, I want to thank everyone for taking the time out this evening to kind of listen to all of us talk about ourselves for a bit. I know that's somewhat boring and it's kind of tough to tell people uh, uh, 
about yourself, but Earl, uh, we know you're going to bring the fire. No, <laughs> not until my age. That's the darn truth. But oh. uh, no, I've been born, raised, reared, educated in uh, Los Angeles, born in Watts. Um, my firm is a combination of a an architectural firm, a project management firm, and a construction management firm. We've been around now as JGM for 40 years. Uh, prior to that, we were the Kerry Jenkins organization with uh, Kerry was a designer of Martin Luther King Hospital, Augustus Hawkins. Um, he did a number of uh, uh, projects. Then when I uh, collaborated with uh, Kerry, uh, we've now done the YWCA, I was a designer on phase two of Cal Plaza downtown. That's a high rise project. Um, collaborated with Arthur Erickson on that. Um, we are uh, currently the project managers on the Harbor UCLA project, which is a $2 billion project. Uh, we were until it was canceled, the project managers on the two and a half billion dollar um, mental health facility and uh, correctional facility downtown. So our firm has done a lot of work. We've done a lot of work in the States. We've done a lot of work in China. We, we did uh, three, two billion dollar, uh, two billion square feet mixed use developments in China, one in uh, Danjaman, one in uh, Shenzhen, and the, and the other one was in Canton. Um, so in terms of development, in terms of our firm being a project manager, we have done that, uh, feel very comfortable uh, in that role. And that's part of the role that we're going to play here. Uh, but all of that is probably my, uh, I feel more comfortable by saying it was my master's, it was actually, it was my master's thesis that um, when I think I was you know, 20 years old that got the Metro Rail project funded. So if, if I have a lot of accomplishments, that's the accomplishment that I want uh, everyone to know. And, uh, and on my grave, I want that to be put on there too. Uh, <laughs> I went with Tom Bradley and um, John Dyer, who was on my first uh, flight. And we actually uh, went to uh, UMTA and got the, um, Got the red line and the blue line funded. So I've been around LA. I'm going to be around LA. Uh, on the development side, my family, we have about a quarter of a million square feet of, of retail, uh, commercial, and housing around the states uh, now. So as a developer, we've done that. We've been there. So this project is not you know, unusual uh, for us. Uh, you know, a, a kid born in Watts, when my mother and them used to go to the Crenshaw Shopping Center, we can remember, not to, yeah, to the Crenshaw Shopping Center when they had the Broadway and the May Company there. Um, that was going uptown. That was really uptown for someone who was born on Graham uh, Street there. So I really uh, are coming uh, back again to be involved in this. So, I just want to thank you for your time and I'll, I'll uh, be a part of the, the Q&A at the end. Thank you. Thank you. You've really, come, uh, you've really come full circle on that. So uh, yes, that, that's pretty impressive. That's amazing. All right. And um, we have one more, right? That's four of you. Brenda. All right. Not, hang on one second. At least Brenda. Brenda Curry. Brenda. Can you please unmute yourself for me, Brenda? Okay. Thank right. you very much. Okay. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity for us to be here and talk a little bit about who we are and what it is that we do and what our plans are and how that includes the entire community. Uh, my name is Brenda Curry. I'm the president of Kurtom Building and Development Corporation. Uh, Kurtom has been around for over 37 years. I'm a native of Los Angeles. Uh, Earl and I perhaps were neighbors. I went to uh, Lock High School. Uh, was in the band there, so played flute and all of that. Uh, I played flute, and my <laughs> band was amazing. You guys were yes. great. 
<laughs> right. So we were the I'm in the first class that went all the way through. So that made Locke's band so famous and marched in the, in the parades and the Rose Parade. But but anyway, uh, and a, a graduate of USC for uh, grad school. Um, but Kurt Tom, you know, I, I started this firm, you know, I, I left corporate America as an engineer and wanted to make a difference in the community. And in doing that, uh, uh, construction. Nobody in my family was involved with it or any of those kind of things, but it was an opportunity to make a difference. The uh, Century Freeway or the 105 Freeway was coming through the area then. There had been 25 years of getting ready for that. And uh, I took a leave of absence and, and jumped ship to start Kurtom and uh, actually formed then the, um, the a construction organization that was the voice of contractors. There were 20 of us then that were trying to get jobs on the Century Freeway. And because of our efforts, and it, and it was necessary for, we didn't need to speak separately, but we needed to speak as one voice so that our concerns could be heard. And that has been true uh, throughout. We all know that there's, that there's a volume in numbers and we need to be, have that type of collaborative effort. As a result of that and being president of that organization, I was uh, appointed to sit on the C Century Fre Freeway Affirmative Action Committee, that board by Judge Harry Pragerson, to give a voice to contractors on that project and to uh, at least see what was going on and to be a conduit for uh, opportunities for us then. That's the same thing that we're doing right now, to be a conduit, to be a voice to see what's going to be going on on this project and what happens in our community. And that has been uh, just in, in the building of, of Curtom over these years. Um, you know, we do big box retail. We, we serve a lot of different uh, um, communities and a lot of different services. We are a construction management firm as well as a general contractor. And with that, we partner with the clients that we have and with the community. We are a preferred builder for Target stores across the nation. Most of the Targets that you see around here, uh, we built, have remodeled, have expanded, have done all of those. And uh, we were probably one of the, we were the first uh, woman and black contractor to build for Target. Sit on their board now for diversity to talk about how do we get more people involved uh, in those types of projects and in big box retail. Uh, when we come in, uh, whether it's construction management or as a general contractor, it is imperative that we open the door for others to come in as well. So it's not checking a box to say, have you done this before, any of those kind of things. No, we haven't because the door hasn't been open. So we bring in other subcontractors and opportunities and those types of things on all of the projects that we do. Uh, We've built for TJ Maxx and been a construction manager on those, Wells Fargo Bank, Bank of America, uh, and on the historic side, this project uh, has, as you know, two historic uh, buildings that are there. We have a lot of experience in terms of uh, dealing with historic projects and how do you retain that. Uh, at Exposition Park, the, the Museum of Science and Industry, if you look uh, south from the Rose Garden, the, the wall, the demolition that start was there to dem demolish those original buildings. Uh, we were a part of that and did the demolition and asbestos abatement. And we had to retain that existing wall and everything that was in there uh, so that the, what we see now as the new building could be connected to it. So with the historic uh, projects that are out there, that's just one of many that we've done. Um, the public utilities, uh, for Southern California Edison, um, you know, it's an interesting story there. Finally, you know, knocking on those doors, knocking on those doors and said we needed to be involved in those projects. And when that was being bid, uh, we finally got invited. <clears throat> and there would be four people that would come to be invited to the projects. So now it was three plus me. And I needed to do a joint venture or something like that. So I went to each of the people and each of the companies there and talked to them and said, look, I'm looking for an opportunity. You know, we can do this because there were four of you. Somebody's here, not here, that used to be here. And from that, we created some uh, opportunities that were there for construction management, for 
uh, the San Onofre nuclear plant. We had that for 15 years doing the maintenance on that and the abatement uh, for the generating stations at Alamitos and Redondo Beach. In affordable housing, um, we have been building those and being the construction manager and part of the development team for years and years, uh, 35 years. And uh, a lot of our paths have crossed uh, this team of five. We, we have worked together, our paths have crossed, you know, along this journey that we've been doing and always on all of the projects that we've been involved in, it's how do we bring other people into it as well? It's not about self-serving and the, just the opportunities that, uh, that is afforded to us individually, but it is imperative that we create other opportunities for others and to leverage the doors that we're opening. And that's, what, uh, that's what's pulled us all together. You know, we, we often say, you know, it's just like, man, it's been a road, a long road and all of the pieces and challenges and joys along the way have brought us all back together to say, this is the one. This is the project where we can really make a difference and we can truly be that conduit for the community to say, this is how we get in. Let's create what this should look like. I've been living in View Park for the last uh, 26 years. So uh, this is home for me. And as everybody's saying, I'm not going any place. This needs to be, we need to make this what we want it to look like as a community. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you for, uh, it's a pleasure to meet all of you guys. And I'm just uh, happy that you guys are uh, able to come forward and be a part of the project. And uh, uh, Roland, I'll let you take over from here. Is there a... Uh... Yeah. Thank you, Gina. And, and I'm going to try to speed up because I know you guys have a lot of uh, questions. So just, we, we came here to, to solve a problem. We're creative so problem solvers. And I think you can see why I'm so excited with the talent that we have collectively brought together with the same ethos of opening doors for others. Now, what is the problem? The problem is the Crenshaw Baldwin Hills Mall, 45 acres uh, that, again, my firm did the master plan for, and it was entitled in 2018. But my partner, Steve Lott, worked meticulously with the community, with the developer, and with code requirements to solve this Rubik's Cube. And it was entitled. Entitled means you can by right build the following. You can build 963 units of housing. That's 963 units. You can build 1.1 million square feet of retail. You can build a 144,000 square foot office tower. And you can build a 400 room hotel and you can have about six, 7,000 parking spaces, all by right. And this is what started the whole ball rolling. And we get to the, the, the design in, entailed a, like a Crenshaw, I'm sorry, a Century City uh, mall outdoor type environment that was at Crenshaw and Stocker. Crenshaw and Stocker, we had an envision of flipping that inside out. You know how it turns its back you know, the back of a bank with a fence around it. That's such an important intersection. And we had envisioned of making that a grand entry with a grand set of stairs that takes you to a pedestrian promenade that's on access all the way across Marlton into uh, uh, the uh, Kaiser, uh, a green space at the Kaiser Permanente. And then we would develop housing, mixed use housing, including affordable, on, on the remaining sites, in, in addition to a, a hotel site, and in, a, in addition to um, remodeling the existing mall. And as you know, uh, that came to a halt. Uh, Capri Capital uh, was no longer the owner. That was our client, and uh, it was sold. And then it was sold, to, our CIM was in, in escrow, and now that went out of escrow, and then now, we have a new owner and that now we're in this position of how can we make this work for the community? Again, this team is the conduit as, as Brenda said, to open up doors of opportunity to bring everybody else in. And I think by our presentation and by our history, you can be assured that we are open to being held accountable 
to deliver just that. Now, how can we do just that? Dolores, can you, can you help us and help uh, in, in breaking down some of the steps that we might be able to accomplish this? Dolores needs to be unmuted again, Gene. Dolores, you have that ability to unmute yourself now. Okay. Have we got you, Dolores? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Thank you. I, I think that we really want to look at talking about the structure of the financial deck of this project as it relates to um, how do you course correct and move this project to resiliency. And, and we wanted to kind of walk you through what this, if we look at this project today, what does it look, it look like? If we take a historic perspective of this project, this has been a non-performing asset for probably the last 40 years. Um, when this asset was last purchased, it was um, the purchase cost and the renovation cost was over $175 million. In this last round of this competitive bid process, offers were um, submitted for uh, approximately $100 million for a mall that had a 60% vacancy ratio. When we look at this, when it was time to think about what was going to be the sales price on this, if we look at the, the loss factor of this, the loss factor is that there's going to be a $75 million loss to the owner, which is the pensions funds, and this mall has never generated a sufficient rate of return on it. As we began looking at this process, we needed to think about who was going to be a visionary partner developer able to stack capital with a cash placeholder. And I, I really want to emphasize cash placeholder because this is continue, going to continue to be a non-performing asset for at least the next five to seven years, right? Um, and the capital, the person that was going to bring the capital, we need to be able to really look at this, that it, it, we look, we're looking at capital in the forms of debt. We're looking at it in forms of cash. And then we're also looking at it in forms of how to re bring reinvestment dollars to this transaction. So uh, we have effectively in working in unison with LiveWork, one of the clear things that, that helped us resonate with, the, with LiveWork was that we began to both see this from a, a very clear lens perspective and know that we have to really position this and forge this project to move it to resiliency. And it's gonna take this being a private public partnership plus community and being able to create this as a joint venture relationship. Um, I think that's uh, me. Uh, okay, hold on. Oh, so we wanted to, to go into what is the opportunity. Um, and again, we've taken a look at this from a resilient development perspective. What does that actually mean? And, and, and I'll say we originally submitted an offer. We were the only team that submitted a jet black offer. Every, we say everybody was black. Everybody was black. And we, we purposely did that. Uh, we wanted to um, get our foot in the door, understanding how, um, how monumental the task was. We wanted to try to see if we can uh, leverage the opportunity and do that. And we uh, put together our understanding of what, what that means. Uh, the other thing was that we have interviewed pretty much all of the uh, uh, developers that came to the table with money. And we learned a few things. Most all people on the West Coast, they have pension fund money. The, 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 the East Coast is Wall Street money. You know, that's the people who are on Wall Street. That's just how it is. If you want to do a deal, that's where the money is. And everybody is involved in the same pots is when you're playing at that level. Uh, and so we learned that uh, when we're talking to people. But what we listened for was truly uh, who would be willing to partner with us to forge a possibility of partnership. And so our, our when we did our first offer, uh, we looked at it, this failed asset required such a long-term hold capital. That means people who money 
can and never look back, throw it away, essentially, because that's what this asset requires. And then hope, you know, that it is something that comes to fruition. Um, the other thing is that uh, we talked to Live Work, we've met with him and sincerely looked in his eyes, as we did every other person and, and all the people that we talked to. And uh, his commitment, partnership, leading the efforts, that's how we're able to sit here before you today and say that we're going to be at the table. Um, and then when we're at the table, know that we're here because we're also making sure the door is jammed wide open for our community and our family and our friends and our and the people and our young men in our community. That's what our role is in this. I often tell people I'm a spook sitting by the door, jamming it wide open. That's what I do every day across many platforms. And there's not gonna be any different here. Uh, we have formed alliances. We didn't think about this for ourselves. We, we talk to community people. Currently, uh, we, we formed alliances with Community Build, Ward EDC, Vermont Slauson, Urban League, uh, Pacific Coast Regional and Operation Hope. But that's just currently, we also reached to every developer that we knew that was African-American bidding on this project, including um, downtown. We reached out to them and we told them, and we'll say it here, we, we are here, we're forging the opportunity and we welcome people to come in partnership. We've welcomed all the developers in partnership because that's how this has to be done. This is a billion dollar project. Yes. Um, when you look at Playa Vista, that did not get developed by one person. The new stadium project is not being developed by one person. It's a collaborative of developers for anything of this size. And we have to include a public-private partnership. Uh, we're talking about creating an, a TIF, uh, an enhanced infrastructure district, uh, because we don't have CRA anymore. And then that would help not only the mall, but also corridor and Lemur Park Village. We can work to make sure uh, that money is being uh, retained in our community, tax dollars invest into our community. That's part of our plan. Go into the state and look for money for uh, planning uh, to have sustainable communities. Uh, get this project on the radar of the city and the state and the federal government to get those dollars associated uh, with projects that uh, want to have affordable housing. You have to compete for those dollars. Uh, we know because we've been doing it and we've raised a lot of money and we've built the facilities and we know how to go get those dollars to build affordable housing. And we know that we have to partner with the community, partner with community developers and the city to do that. Uh, and then we, we, we want this to be public private partnership and community as Dolores stated. Uh, and this can happen and, and we're giving this information because our assumption is that this meeting is the beginning of our partnership with you the community for this project. We're already in partnership with many people on the phone already, but we want to leave this meeting knowing that we're all going to work together to happen. And we're not gonna listen to any talk about it because it's not. You, We don't have to be divided and we don't plan on being. Um, Cherie, I just wanted to um, interject when we talk about the um, the infusion of, of subsidies. Yes. Um, Think, uh -oh. you're, you're breaking up on us. But I, I think we, we're going to need to uh, get to yes. q &A. Okay. So, so we'll, uh, Roland, we'll just go here. I think Dolores was going to say that um, what we've done is we're trying to leverage subsidies such as new markets tax credits and, and also opt opportunity zone because those expire. And once they do, we need to prepare to take That's a way that you leverage up in terms of ownership throughout the years. This is a 10, 15 year development. And we can talk about those a little bit later. But I think it's important that we talk about the community development um, uh, agreement that's on the project, a commitment to affordable housing and increasing that number of affordable housing based on going after those dollars to build it and partnering with our community developers to make that happen. Uh, but we also need market rate housing. We have to have it, we have to have place for everybody in our community and workforce housing. So we will work together to figure out what does that mix look like? Along with, you know, Roland determining how much retail we can actually have because of COVID. And Brenda, do you wanna to speak to this piece? And then if you guys don't mind, um, yes, let's please try to uh, wrap up in about five minutes. We really wanna get the information, but I also sure. don't want people time to do questions and answers, but uh, please okay. continue. Thank you for understanding. Thank you. 
Oh, uh, Brenda. All right, hang on one second. Brenda, you can now unmute yourself. Okay, yes. Um, that's just speaking more to that, and we'd want to keep moving through this. There's a, a, a commitment, and we plan to, or it, it's a part of it for the 30% uh, women and minority business contractors and local hires. So that is in the forefront of everything that we're doing, and how do we make, make sure that that inclusion is there? And that means the training and uh, job placement and teaming up with uh, uh, resources that are already in existence to make sure that uh, we're able to fulfill the, the, that type of commitment. And uh, we have done that on other projects very successfully and to exceed it. Yes. Um, we wanted to end this by saying um, we uh, together, we can be a hundred million strong. And we say that because that's approximately how much we have to raise to have ownership. We don't, we don't have ownership unless we raise the dollars. This is uh, important uh, that we, um, uh, raise these dollars and we'll talk about a structure of how do we create a community uh, uh, ownership. Um, we, we know that Live Work will honor that, um, that commitment that he gave to us, that he supports us creating this community ownership structure, but we'll have to work together to um, pull it together, make sure it's SEC qualified, make sure that it's for uh, elements of the project that people understand and they're educated on and that it is uh, something that we can all um, uh, understand. What do you get out of it? We can't just say invest in a mall because that actually is irresponsible. We cannot do that. Uh, but we're gonna be at the table, we're gonna craft it and we're gonna uh, lead through a charrette process to begin to understand uh, what's going to be built and then how it will evolve into a great project and then make this community uh, an economic engine for so many different elements and for uh, for the next generation. Great. Thank you. And thank you guys so much for being here today and for uh, for meeting with the uh, stakeholders and the public. We greatly appreciate uh, getting to know you and seeing your faces and you know, it's great to see people that are from the community really being a part of this mall. So uh, that's that's very exciting. So we're going to get to the uh, to uh, questions and answers in a few minutes. And so I'm going to um, unlock the chat so that if people have uh, questions, they can feel free to begin typing your questions into the chat. Know that we can see your questions. We're going to go through every question that is presented and we will point those out. We do have a time limit on this. So we just have um, about 25 more minutes. We're gonna try and we're gonna stop at seven. So uh, we're already extending an extra half hour just because the presentation ran a little longer, but it was an exciting presentation. So we're very happy that you guys were uh, able to bring so many details to the table. Uh, before we do that, we're gonna do six minutes of, uh, of comments on this agendized item. So the six minutes of comments on this agendized item. If you have a comment, raise your hand and Edmund, would you mind putting the timer up for me? And then we will unmute you and you have uh, one minute to make your comments. So we'll get as many people as we can in, in the six minutes. And I'm going through now to get to the raised hands and we will start with uh, uh, Michaela uh, Randolph. Michaela Randolph, the floor is yours. Please unmute yourself, you have one minute. Hi, um, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much um, for providing this platform for us to get informed on, you know, the current happenings. My name is Michaela Randolph. I am board president of Sola Food Co-op, a um, startup food cooperative aiming to be a community owned grocery store in South LA along the Crenshaw Corridor. And I basically want to say thanks again to the partners who have come together to really um, introduce yourselves about the project. And I'm also interested in hearing how much of the original design can we keep? And what are your thoughts about how this project being partially community owned um, or this community partnership, you know, serving as a model for places like ours that are being gentrified and the landscape is changing? So thank you for that excellent question. Do you mind also chat, uh, typing your question into the chat for us? And then, uh, because right now we're getting comments, so thank you, but uh, please keep that in mind and type your question into the chat so we can be sure to get to it. But thank you for participating. All right, and next up, I'm gonna make, and again, this is for comments. So if you have a comment that you'd like to make about the project, go for it. If you have a question, please type it into the chat. All right, uh, I am uh, unmuting Jamie. Uh, Jamie, the floor is yours for the next minute. 
Uh, thank you. I'm just going to take up a little bit of time because I don't want to take up too much time here. My name is Jamie. I'm the Subdistrict 3 representative for Subdistrict 3 in Wilshire Center Koreatown Neighborhood Council. Uh, I just want to speak just like on the egregious misuse of the Neighborhood Council system that I'm witnessing. There's like 200 people in this meeting and yet you're only allowing 15 minutes of public time. Uh, as a council member, I've sat through hours of meetings because I just have chosen to serve the community. And this item does have a community petition with over 12,000 signatures. The previous meeting recordings have not been released. People are protesting this development. And through most of the presentation, the developers only spoke of themselves and never really mentioned what this brings to the community. So I just, I want to hope that you listen to the community. There's widespread local, regional and national opposition. And you could have used the time from this presentation to listen to the community and I yield the rest of my time. Thank you for your input. And uh, next up, let's go to uh, Addie Neff. And I apologize uh, if I'm mispronouncing your name, uh, but you can unmute yourself now. Um, I actually have a question, so I'll just steal my time for comments. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Feel free to type your question into the chat though. Thank you. And next we'll go to uh, Rakua uh, and uh, you have the floor, one minute. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uplift downtowncrenshaw.com um, for a community-led perspective and reflect what Jamie just said about our time being used um, legitimately. And I heard the word conduit for the community being used several times, and I'm just interested to know how the community is being included in, in this project. Um, from you guys' perspective, and I'll type my questions in the chat, but I just wanted to lift that, that, that perspective up and encourage you guys to visit downtowncrenshaw.com for that community-led perspective. All right, thank you for your comments. And uh, next up, uh, Leah, would you like to unmute yourself? And uh, the floor is yours. Hi, um, I also just want to... Uh-oh, -uh. Leah, you're muted. Hang on. Unmute yourself again for me, Leah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, I just wanted to echo what um, the other folks just said before me. I'm also a neighborhood council member for Mid City Neighborhood Council, but I'm speaking as a private citizen. Um, I think that it's really unfortunate that there wasn't enough time to hear from 